Yeah, that was one of the situations one. where they um, SAG actually ran into the vision of Aster once again. Like if you saw closely, every single fight that uh, SAG lost was under the vision of Aster, where they didn't D ward, they didn't really like smoke into that area. They kind of just walked in, and Aster had ample time to be able to plan the team fight <laughs> according to what they wanted. All right, here we go with draft number two in the second game of Asta versus Sparkling Arrow Gaming. And we're going to start something pretty different, but also very strong. It's the Oracle Lashrak <laughs> opening from Team Asta. Why do we like it, folks? I, I kind of like how they were like, listen, we'll show you how to play Lashrak with a proper support hero for the Lashrak. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost it like they're teaching like their like children, a... <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's le learn from us young ones and become better players but uh yeah the oracle last rock tried and true combination last rock is a hero with insane damage output probably one of the highest dps heroes in dota his only flaw is he needs to run into the fight to do that damage and there's no better hero to complement a hero like a last rock or a huskar than oracle so you really can't go wrong with this slash oracle opening I like it a lot. I completely agree with that. Uh, it's just very solid. And um, I think their plan with this last track is just to play a faster game speed than these meta carries can. Mm -hmm. They don't really care about Luna, TB, because those heroes don't join team fights early on. And that just means this last track is going to be able to run around the map, or at least Aster can just group up as four or even five if they pick a faster carry and just take all the objectives and just kind of push this Luna's like farming potential down. That's a very good point. And in taking the Lush Rock, you make sure that you have that burst damage through the Cold Embrace. Like we saw last game, SAG's Lush was able to kill targets and through Cold Embrace, even with the Holy Locket. So picking it also kind of Five makes them feel secure remaining. and that they're not particularly worried in dealing with Wyvern. And I really like this Grimstroke pick by Aster because it's a four Grimstroke and it's going to have a lot of farm priority. And Dark Portrait, I think, is Luna's probably one of the best Dark Portrait targets in Dota. It's really good. Yeah, we saw um, the same thing yesterday where it was Grimstroke versus Luna, but the key difference, the Grimstroke was the five. And he yep. ended the game like 100 gold away from Aghanims, and it was really sad, and we were all crying and just saying, why is this Grimstroke not a four? And now <laughs> Asta come and they, they, they answer our prayers. Thank you, Asta. Sad. I mean, there are some flaws to four Grimstroke. That comes with this ability to die very easily online, which isn't necessarily something you want out of your four. But if they pair him up with the correct offlaner, there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to hit his axe timing early enough. Yeah, and Luna Winter Wyvern is probably not as strong of a dual lane as other Luna plus position five. So I think they're going to have that little bit of leeway there because of it. Bloodseeker, great partner for Grimstroke. You can just uh, use your stroke, slow them down under the blood right. It's a lot of damage potential there. Mm -hmm. You got the double course, ruptures the coming out too. Yep. Double rep rupture can definitely be annoying, but Luna is one of those heroes who just doesn't mind standing still and fighting. So she if, isn't if... particularly the best rupture target. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, kind of leaning into something which I've been harping on about for absolutely ages. Um, I don't think it's going to happen still, but Bloodseeker plus IO plus Leshrac has been a combo I've been waiting for this entire patch, because you can just stack with Spell Amp, and I mean, it's... <laughs> I, I don't know if it's good, but it would be funny to see a Lash Rack just doing, running in and doing like 1k damage a second. It's, it's creative, I'll tell you that. Thank you. I mean, it is actually. I can see this Lash Rack doing so much damage with the Oracle behind him with just Bloodseeker buffing him. Why not? We might see him pop off. But I want to comment on the Storm Spirit pick a little bit. I like it a lot because there are no instant disables on the side of Aster. And that's what you think about when you're playing against the Storm Spirit. Uh, Grim does have a silence and Lush does have a stun, but a good Storm can always play around it and dodge it. And the most important thing about picking Storm on the Radiant lineup is that they finally have a hero to jump the Oracle. Because when you're playing versus an Oracle Lush lineup, it is paramount that you just have someone to get on top of the pesky little Oracle and kill him before the fight mm -hmm. starts. I... That's very good point. The only thing I would add on to that would be they need a secondary jumper as well with the storm. Because 
what happens when you play Storm versus Oracle matchup mm -hmm. is Tennis if you jump in by yourself, the Oracle can see you coming through on the minimap before you can even get Orchid off. He's going to fate seed it himself. Scary. And that is Storm's, like, 80% of Storm's damage is going to come from his magic. So you're gonna not going to be able to solo kill him. And so you're going to need another guy who can go in with you that can deal the mm -hmm. damage for you as well. And you got two targets, right? You got the Grim, you got the Oracle. And now if you got two guys going in, you got to think about the Grim Stroke possible leash... Uh, leashing you as well as a storm so it, it can really be difficult for the storm but if he has like an amazing game where he just free farms get some solid pickoffs uh and just improves his farming speed he can have some we can have some some really nice game here for the storm mm. and you're right because when you think about a jump hero who's the follow-up damage on sag just dropped so far it's hoodwink and hoodwink is also a magical damage hero so I do. I would like to see them pick some kind of like big boy offlaner who's always ready to fight with Storm. I know Centaur isn't that popular, but we did see him played to success yesterday, and I can see him doing well here. I like a. Hmm, oh, Sanking was banned. Okay, so they go. With, oh wow! Ooh, Look at that. S A G called it. It's an Oracle or something. But the reason why Centaur stood out to me was just that Whoa. what kind of what kind of hero can you pick when you get soulbound? You just kind of hope your Centaur stampedes and you both run away together. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes so, a lot of sense and very good at jumping Orko. Yeah, Huskar. So does this Huskar make a lot of sense? <laughs> uh, they got Oracle, so maybe. Um, but I think they're just actually trying something out right here. I think so too. Like, I think this is just them it. experimenting a little bit because you don't want two Oracle alt targets. Like the Oracle wants to play with the Lush Rock. Mm -hmm. Has he got a chainsaw cosmetic on the Husker? Looks like it. Cool. So the tribal spearman has a chainsaw now. Great. Very cool. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is a wild draft from Aster. I, I can't really remember the last time I saw Huskar win a game, but I am biased by all of my friends. <laughs> It's 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 a strange place that hero right now, but I mean this is so aggressive from Team Master. Leshrac, Bloodseeker, Huskar is their cause here. I mean, do they really beat Luna, Storm, Centaur in this game? This feels like they have to crush the lanes and then just get the mm -hmm. choke hold and just keep on running at them. Like if they, if they stop running for one second, they're gonna they're gonna just die. They're yeah. like basking sharks or something, right? So for draft alone, I do favor SAG a lot more, but I do think Aster are a better team and they play the map in such an impeccable way. As Steven said, it just feels like they have every team in China's card. But yeah, I think draft alone, definitely SAG for me. I think okay. Aster, this is the kind of play style they like to do though. They want to be able to win and go pressure towers and just keep pressuring you while you're farming. And I think uh, I would have to go with Aster here just because there's too many targets for SAG to actually jump. And I feel at some point they're going to run out of damage and the Luna is not going to be able to come online fast enough. If Huskar or... hits his timings, Luna is not going to be able to play Dota this game. Alrighty, can they hit their timings? Can they play fast enough? Let's find out. It's Asta vs. SAG, game number two with Beacop and Mofar. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be coming in here, Aster, SAG, Aster with a one nothing lead. You excited for this Huskar, Mo? Yeah. You excited I mean, for SAG to show a little bit more? There's a three-word phrase that I think describes this Aster lineup perfectly that I like to say in my pubs a lot to my team, which is apes together strong, b -cop. <laughs> And I'm a little bit worried for SAG that Luna and Storm are going to take a little bit of time to come online, and this Centaur even... It, you know, it's, we saw the Hood Vanguard yesterday. I don't think he can afford to do that here. I think he's going to have to get either Hood or Vanguard into the blink to be able to make space and, you know, create um, kills with his team. Warax in trouble. Hit with the bushwhack. He's away from his team and he'll be first blood. ZYD getting that first blood and see how ZYD does on this storm coming into game number two. By the way, I did some investigative research um, on the four position for sag and if my translation is correct the name translates roughly to white horse um and he was the four for ig vitality for a long time and uh ehome immortal 
Well, so he's cool. got a, a little bit of experience yeah. going his way. It's nice to know that you can you can do the research and find out who these people are, though. Because <laughs> well, uh, like you say, I think having that competitive experience is really important. I was going to say for Asta, it's really important that they're able to get this Huskar against either the Centaur or the Storm, and he ends up having to lane against an aggro try, uh, which is a bit difficult. Uh, so I think SAG have got their lanes in a really good position here. And there goes the courier with a salve on it. White horse getting it done, getting that courier. This try lane, do you think the it forces Astro to play musical lanes? Does Monet try to find himself bottom against uh, the centaur, or you just try to stick with it for now? I think you just have to deal with it now, unfortunately. And then this is really good by SG as well. They've managed to get the lane in a position where it's going to be pushing back towards them a bit. So if the Huskar ever stops up here. You know, they're going to hit their level two soon, and they can just, you know, really punish. Ooh. Leave the Oracle by himself. He's TPing towards bottom. We should yeah, we should probably mention the Storm got the first blood, by the way, which is going to make this mid lane so much more difficult for White Album than it would have been otherwise. You know, the Storm's going to get this much earlier bottle. And they are going to swap lanes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And they're just going to swap back. Well, at least the Wyvern's TPing away. And yeah, maybe committing going to the dual lane. We'll see if that's what they want to do at the moment. And allow Monet to be here up against Son Goku. As Acorn shot, Bushwhack looking for the kill. Adam one shot from dead, and it'll be there for White Horse to finish off. That's what my crossbow likes to call a trigger It's an interesting matchup mid, I would say, with White Album ZYD. Um, we were talking about who knows a Lestrac better than White Album, and now he's on Lestrac. Time to show gets everybody what he's got. To, gets that chance to finally play here on that Lestrac over mid. I mean, look at the Huskar CS since he's gone to bot lane, by the way. I mean, this lane's just ridiculous. He's got 10 denies already. I think he got five of them up in the top lane. And another one of the tallies. He's hitting 11 and 11, 12 and 11. Radiant now 13 and 11. Every time he's got even just... CS and denies, you could just make a wish. Yeah. And this centaur is really going to struggle to have a game now. Because the lane doesn't get easier close for him. Enough. Like, <laughs> it, it's not like he's playing offlane and he can creep skip either, right? Right. He's just kind of existing in this bot lane while the Huskar free farms. And they're looking over at Borax, but that's about all they're doing. And he looks at this stack. He's trying to make the full pull through. And let's see. Oh, no. Centaur getting stomped Ooh. by Centaur. That's not... And that means the pull doesn't go all the way through. Yeah, that's sad. I'm surprised SAG didn't react to the musical lane that they played. Yeah, I'm really shocked as well. Especially, you know, they went out their way at the start of the game to get this laning set up. Which is fantastic, but then they don't respond. A little odd to me. Monet is really starting to blast off here in terms of what he's getting out of the lane and where he's at. He's picked up a helmet of the Iron Will. He's going into that early armlet with the boots I mean, and wand finish. At this rate, B-Cop, Huskar might have more denies than you have MMR. This is, this is rough. Speak up, you there? They get the kill on Storm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to deal with this <laughs> burn that I've just received. Oh yeah, they do get that kill on a ZYD, which he ends up a little bit further out than maybe he would have liked. Uh, he's on the other side of the river and gets caught out by White Album. A little surprised that he found himself in a pretty bad position in that spot. As they go after Sun Goku, they'll get the sun with the ink swell. Monet thinking about going in onto this centaur, but instead he'll go back to the lane and Sun Goku ETPs finding himself a CS. Oh, doesn't even get it. Never mind. So even with that movement, he doesn't get himself that CS that he would like. He's like one or two denies away from being higher than I have MMR. <laughs> 
Um, Stupendous. I wonder, like, how how do the radiant try and come back into this game now, right? Because, like we've said, the storm and the lunar are both a little bit greedy, and the centaur needs decent farm to be able to like force the tempo of this game. Because without his tempo, it's going to be really difficult for SAG to take fights. Interesting. So it's yeah. it's really worrying for me. Over here now. They're going to go back to an aggro try up top. Yeah, I mean, they can't win bot lane. So there's no point having any supports down there, right? That silence hits MS. That gets him a little bit low. XXS. Moving right now at 472. Splinter Blast coming through and hitting on the XXS as Lanham trying to heal up as best he can. White Horse coming in and maybe checking up on that Oracle, but won't find anything as he scurries around the back. And White Album trying to take care of this tower, take care of this storm. Ball Lightning getting under the tier two, but this is now pressure onto the mid tier one that they really need to be careful about handling. They're going to bring this Huskar up here. Or, sorry, Grimstroke up here. Get ready for the ink swell. It's going to be Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's go. Collect those rings as Sonic. And star in a movie with Jim Carrey. Sonic's had a great career. And Monet just left to his own accord to over bottom. And he's now level six. It's just about got this armlet. I'm surprised. I thought the Lesher was going to come bot to play with the Huskar with the catapult wave. And they'll get the root. They'll look for the blood right. XXS taking a lot of damage from the Arctic burn. He's just killed off by XCJ. The Ink Swell comes in. It's looking over at White Horse, oh, no, but Borax. well, with the Bushwhack, Borax is in a bad spot. Lucent Beam comes in. They've got the Stampede. They're going to look to get themselves not one, not two, but three. Line them under the tower. Not sure that'll matter. Acorn shot not bouncing. XCJ, he's committing. Oh, run, run, shot. Run. Radiant's bottom tower. And the Splinter Blast. Oh my goodness. He's still alive. <laughs> still running. And instead, MS gets the kill. So they get all three in that top lane. Yeah, really well played. I mean, the problem is still the Lesh and the Hushka, but the Storm's coming, like, finding his way back into the game right after that death earlier. So he's doing really well. He can't get to trading farm against the Lesh. He's actually going treads first. Okay, so not rushing like Orchid or anything. Even against the Oracle, I thought he might consider it. Hmm. Try to take the Oracle's influence out of the game. Yeah. I mean, that was. I, I'm assuming that was the main reason they considered the Storm as well. Obviously, when you play against these like defensive heroes like Wyvern and uh, Oracle, it's really good to have this like long range jump. You know, things like Spectre as well. Oh, what a nice, what value sentry that is. I'm blocking the small camp and finding a ward. <laughs> the ultra gold. Oracle at level 5 right now. You take a look at the Grimstroke, only a level 4. Borax trying to go into the arcane boots. Is it going to be arcane boots trade ags for Borax? Uh, he might go Aether Lens first, potentially. Which is what some green strokes do, but I think uh, the axe, when you get it at such an early timing, it has so much value. Ink swell, but immediately bushwhack. He's trying to chase with the pulse nova, and he's got that haste. They'll get the kill onto White Horse. He's going to buy back into the spike. Zwei did go into the back line, looking for the vortex onto the green stroke. They'll use that eclipse. Do they have the damage? No, they don't. Well, Adam gets the kill and will take out MS as well as Sun Goku. It is that purifying flames damage at level three that does so much. And there it is again. Lanham with the triple kill. The game's even at five. And Aster have a 3k lead. Should be able to secure themselves even more if they want to stay and put the pressure on. And there it is, B-Cop. As we said at the start of the game, apes together strong. <laughs> you group up as five. Well, they weren't even five. They were four. Did they have the Huskar? I don't think they did. The no, just run. I don't, it was so funny seeing them be like, oh, the Lesh is here, guys. Can you press Stampede so we can run away? And then they don't realize he has a haster in. And they're like, guys, why is the Lesh able to keep up, like, on top of us? Oh, oh. oh this guy's no. moving really fast. <laughs> guys? Guys? Just gets run down. And just, I love 
I love Oracle and how much you can just swipe kills with purifying flames. <laughs> if only people picked it in my pubs more for that, I wouldn't even mind. At least if, as long as they press their spells on me. I don't care if you take kills, you know. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant Ooh, my fine MS again. Rupture, blood right. And oh, he let him charge up for it. He wanted it. <laughs> he wanted the kill with the purifying flames. I, I was he sh I was gonna say about top fight. By the way, it would have been um, so much better if the supports on the radiant side had six as well. So like, I think now that the supports do have six on the radiant, they should look to potentially try and do something. But you're mm -hmm. at that really awkward point now where like, how do you start a fight? You have to like stampede in. It's really awkward. I just want Lanham to not be involved in anything else at any point in this game anymore. Why? This is kill score is 3 2 2. Oh, nice. Silence. Oh, Follow that up with the Fortune Zen coming through on a Sun Goku. Ink Swell, Stampede. So that'll get him away. But XCJ might not be so fortunate. Rupture off cooldown in 10 seconds. Fortune Zen being charged up on the Bloodseeker. And, well, he'll cold embrace himself, and when he gets out of that, he'll be silenced by the blood right. Low on health, in some trouble, and hit with the purifying flames for allowing oh, him to get no. yet another kill. And, oh, bottom lane, White Album running down MS. They look over Monet, they get the kill, and it's going to be ZYD who gets credit for that one, and a little ball lightning TP attempt. <gasps> oh, just away as that Fortune Zen was coming in under the blood seeker to try and stop that on ZYD. Worth it, you get the Huskar. It's mental damage. Got, you got to get in their heads, you know? I mean, this Lesher is just taking over the game. The fact that Lesher is able to walk bot lane and just solo kill a Luna at this point. That feels pretty good for White Album. Like, for if sure. You, if you look at the map where SAG are, like, wanting to play, they want to play this top lane. They have this really deep ward down, which is fantastic. But where on the map do they feel safe to farm right now? Like, the whole bottom half of the map doesn't feel great for them. So they'll send the Centaur down there. It's like, yeah, he's... Uh, you know, less important than the Lunar or the Storm. Lining in, they're looking for White Album to land the Sharpshooter. Do they have the damage? No, False Promise is going to be there from Lanham, but they've got the Winter's Curse. This locks up three. That means he's not getting these heals off to save White Album, who's taking a lot of damage and ends up dead Bro, to White Horse. So he gets the False Promise off, but it really doesn't mean much when the Winter's Curse locks up all three of them and Lanham can't get any extra healing out. I'm just wondering at what point... As, uh, Mone wants to play with the rest of his team on the Huskar as well. Like, is there a certain point that he's waiting for? Oh my god, that is terrifying. Dyer's top tower is under attack. What's terrifying? Uh, he, the, they zoomed in on the Huskar. Ooh, that is pretty terrifying. It does make me think of what I was doing yesterday. People didn't understand the reference to Friday the 13th. You know that I don't get any film references, so... I know that you don't, but ni neither did chat. Radiant structures are fortified. Chat but, uh... Me and chat don't care about films. We just want to watch Dyer, you know? Dyer are scanning. ZYD coming over and... Oh, Mone, not again. He's here no. with the hoodwink. I get another zoom in on the Huskar while he's in the trees? Oh, oh no, hold on. on, hold that thought. Rupture comes out on MS. Oh, good I can't TP. stop the TP. Okay, so he's 400 gold and 500 gold off the blink on center. So that's going to be a big point for the radio side. They're actually not doing too badly considering how that top fight went. I thought the game was going to explode, but it's been, it's slowed down a little bit since, which I think does favor SAG. I would agree. Oh, they're taking the ancient stack though. That's so sad. And I'm surprised it hasn't gone as fast as it did off that top fight. Sharpshooter lands. They've got the host on, but they're going to get themselves soul bound together. And now Silence with the Phantom's Embrace. They're going to go after MS, but behind them is ZYD. Ball Lightning Vortex coming through on Alanum. Lanham trying to survive. He's got himself with the False Promise to try and save himself. They get the kill on MS, and as well as XCJ. 
Fortune Zen charged up, hitting on a ZYD. Son Goku trying to run around and get the kill on XSS as well and have that control. But White Album coming through. Diabolic Edict is the damage there. Maybe to get a kill on a Son Goku, but ZYD, he doesn't have a lot of mana to work with. And now he's slowed up. Hit by the stun, they'll get the kill on a ZYD. Look over at Son Goku. Should be a fourth. Centaur getting body blocked by XXS. And he will be hit by that stun coming through from White Album. As they will find a fourth. Meanwhile, Monet taking rush. <laughs> Monet's like, guys, can you win four versus five? Because I am enjoying myself here. You know, like, <laughs> I'm just doing my thing, having a good time. This Huskar just looked like the cosmetic looks like a horror villain. Yeah, it's, the change okay, just doesn't make any sense. If Jason Voorhees combined with Leatherface, <laughs> combined with Huskar. Oh, sharpshooter, here we go. Gonna snipe the Huskar. Nailed it. Swing and a miss. Also, the mask kind of gives a Mad Max vibe to it. It, yeah, I thought that earlier as well. Tower has Monet just farming here. He's got an Aegis this time around, so maybe he gets a little bit more involved with the team. He's sitting 0, 1, and 0. He's on a farming spree. A little bit different than a killing spree. <laughs> Have you seen the video of the guys that try to win a game of Dota without doing any hero damage? Pacifist? And they did win it. Interesting. They had like Lone Druid, Tree, Naga. I can't remember what the other two heroes were. Curse, Hoofstomp, Sharpshooter. Oh, he's still alive. And he's still alive. <laughs> oh, okay. There goes the Aegis, but they'll get the kill of Son Goku, so worth it. I mean, that's pretty annoying for Mone though because he got involved with a kill participation there so yeah so now he's zero one and one I don't know how I feel about that oh pupils yeah which he won't use it's not awful on Huskar but... oh here we go Ball lightning looking for the Grimstroke, and he's got the ink swell. That won't hit ZYD. He's oh, trying he's to so zip and zap and zoom around the bushwhack. Oh, ZYD with the fortune's end, and they'll get a kill onto the storm, who was a little bit too aggressive. Now an 8k lead for Aster, so and that bottom kind of getting pulled out from under the side of SAG a little bit. Roche recently taken, but the Aegis used pretty early on on that uh, death by Monet over in the jungle of the Radiant side. I'm not working with that Aegis, trying to get into BKB though, or into a BKB though. Yeah, I mean, when he gets a BKB, if you look at the Radiant side, I mean, they struggle to kill the Huskar already, but unless he's on what HP from Armlet toggling the whole time just before, but um, yeah, I think. The lack of physical damage is going to become very apparent when the BKBs come online. I, I don't even know if the Lesh goes for one either. And, that, and this is why the Oracle is so important in this game, because he has the Fates Edict as well. Like, when he pops that Fates Edict on the Husker or the Lesh, how are they killing them? The Lesh especially, because he doesn't even need to attack. Nice Arcane Rune Lesh here. Standing in front of the tier two and avoiding stuns. Seven hundred gold needed for the BKB for Huskar and Luna. MS has his. It's another one of those games where I just don't feel like I felt the presence of MS yet, and he's playing a, a lot different one position this time around. But his team is not playing as well as they did in the last game at this point, I would say. I mean, like, they're going to be like, oh, yes, the Lesh is by himself. And guess who's on the side? It's Early the false promise. Let's get the him, baby. The shooter coming through, and they're <laughs> going to use the Stampede to leave. And it really is that Oracle, baby, that gets the false promise. 
to keep alive White Album. Sun Goku goes in with the Bleak as well as the Host. They're going to try and turn their attention over on XXS. They'll look over the Oracle as well with the Blood right down. That's going to hit on the MS as well as Sun Goku, who stopped up via the Rupture. Ball Lightning, ZYD on the run. Lanham still surviving. Fortune's in turn of MS, who will be KB as well as the Eclipse. The Eclipse coming down with a ooh, Winter's Curse, locking up Monet. It's still not enough damage on the side of SAG to get the kill on uh, anybody on Aster, as they have Wing Swell landing on him. The Winter Wyvern, as they get the kill on Son Goku, they're going to hold for a second. Stroke of Fate and another Purifying Flames kill for Lanham. Sure, that Inkswell is so nice because it charges up and he, as he runs past the centaur, he's gaining stun time on the Inkswell, right? And then he eventually catches up to the Wyvern in the last kind of like couple of frames. And the Wyvern's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Tier 2 will be taken after this. I mean, Lanham's just always in the right positions. The Storm finds him that fight, but he just doesn't do enough damage. And there's the Ags for Borax, too. Oh. Borax wants the shard. Just I, It's crazy how SAG threw everything they had in the kitchen sink. That Eclipse, too. It just didn't feel like it did anything. It was because he got Fate's Edict on the Lesh at the same time. So the Eclipse just didn't do any damage to the Lesh. Yeah. And this is what we were saying before, that, you know, this Oracle is such a key component of the fight. If the Oracle lives and you don't kill him off first, then you're in big trouble. And the, I think the Storm realized that. He finds Lanham in the fight, but nobody joins him because they don't have the same jump range that the Storm does. And then Lanham's just able to live. Turn with his spells. Lanham's getting this all done without an Aether Lens, without a Keen Optic, so he doesn't have that extra cast well, he, range. He's doing it within the bounds of the hero right now. Yeah, he has the Blink, though, as well, which is kind of yeah. better because then you don't have to be anywhere near the fight to be able to cast your spells, because you don't want to be the hero that gets gone on first, right? So you say all the way out the far side of the fight in the trees or something, and then when they go on your team, then you blink in, you save them. And at that point, if they kill you after you've cast your first round of spells, it's not the end of the world. Do you know what? I appreciate uh, that. That was, that was cute. Jeez. Now that he hasn't died, I'll agree. He's trying to catch the Huskar on like really low HP with this like high damage burst, right? Is it even going to be enough though? Uh, probably not, but you know, maybe if he's armlet or something, then he gets lower. It's like a low risk, high reward play, right? If it does work. Sharpshooter's low cooldown, doesn't really matter. Right. Eleven K lead for for Aster and going Orchid on this Bloodseeker. Oracle saving up eleven hundred gold shard for the Grimstroke next. And uh, you know it, it looks like the items coming in for Aster are going to be more than enough to finish off the game. They're going to look over at Sun Goku. They've got the Rod of Atos as well as the Life Break coming through from Oni. They get the kill on Sun Goku quite easily. And MS he needs to be careful. Almost ruptured there. It looked like XXS was looking for it. Yeah, and guess what's coming soon, B Cop? Uh, second Roche. Second Roche. It looks like quite a long spawn, but. 226. Yeah. That's, uh, like two and a half minutes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. Aster would have liked a much quicker one, if possible. And you were right, he did go, um, Arcane's eggs on the ground. He goes back for the Aether Lens now, I assume. Oh, he's going shard. Uh, he's got shard sense. at the moment. Yeah. It's pretty good. That sh that shard is so strong, though. You know, like having the purge is really good as well, but the heal is also really strong, especially in conjunction with the oracle. Top lane, Dybok Edict. They'll go for the top tier two and get it. Thirteen K lead, just expanding pretty much constantly in the same direction. Warx really getting a lot out of the map, and he's got that shard, so that'll get delivered. Roche up at a minute twenty-one.
Monet, uh, the Huskar is doing what Morphling does to me. Where you get low on health and you're not near anybody, but I still panic look anyway. Yeah, I get you. You just, you just, it, it's the worst feeling as, as, a, as an observer when that happens. And then like the techies minds as well, you never catch those kills. No, Lucian Beam, and now they're going to try and get the kill here on the Bloodseeker and take out they Lionel the Oracle. Curse. They've got the blood right down as well as the Eclipse coming through. Is it going to be enough oh, the damage with the Winter's though. Curse? That's going to be a little bit of anti-synergy oh. as they get the kill on Son Goku as well as MS. They'll take out IXXS. A two for two so far. Uh, is this little track get any more? It looks likely. White Album, he's got a haste. He's going to run down XCJ looking over at White Horse. Ink Soil doesn't land, neither does the Stroke of Fate, but over into the Phantom's Embrace. White Album missing the stun. Now under the Tier 2 Stroke of Fate, White Album with the double kill, and it's a killing spree for him. Top lane, Monet was searching for ZYD, but ZYD's got enough mana to make oh, his way out anyway. B-Cop, that was so sad. The Eclipse was like about to kill the Bloodseeker and the Wyvern Curses at the same time, but the Huskars already used BKB, so the curse doesn't even affect him. And he just kills the Lunar at the same time as the Bloodseeker's not dying. Oh no. The anti synergy what, what strikes disaster. again. Oh, they're waiting for the storm to show and push the Creep Wave. Oh no. Enemies embrace. They've got the silence. Ink swell with the stun. Easy kill on a ZYD. Oh look, Mone's Mone playing 1v1 versus Roche again instead as well. Monet doing the PVE. IDCT. Who gets the shard? Did he use that? Uh, yeah, he picked it up. Inner fire. Reduce healing regen by 50% yeah. and applies a 40% movement speed slow. Actually, it's really good against the Wyvern in particular. So I think it's, yeah, it's good. I was going to pick up an Axe too in just a second. But the Axe is the jewel, which is going to be hilarious. It's like a trying to duel a legion, but he's on drugs or something, you know? Like, can you give me legion dual drums when it happens? I'll, I'll try. Okay. I'll see what I can do. That's all I ask for. <laughs> Just try. Um, here they come. Second Aegis cheese, which I assume is on the lash. They have Shard Crystalis on the Luna, which is great. But... Ooh, Blink Hoofstomp with the Bushwhack back and forth with the Ball Lightning. Oh no, my attack speed. Where did it go? My blood. It's been broken. But this is what we were saying about the Sharpshoot though, right? Like, it, it really affects Huskar if you can hit him because of the break. And it is a huge amount of single target damage. When it's level 3, it'll be that much more. Yeah, then you get the talent at 25 and it goes through BKB. Nice. Because I'm sure they're going to get to level 25 on the on the during this game. Only oh, Titan 12 Sliver. more levels to go. Titan Sliver Husker. <laughs> more status resistance, you say? <laughs> I like this way by SAG. They need to try and get out on the map and find a kill because if they allow Asa to just run at them as five again, they're going to be in big trouble. So they run towards their ward. Always a good idea. Radiant Unfortunately, they don't find anybody. I think White Album seems to know something's going on because there's nobody in uh, showing in the top side of the map. Because that's where the rest of his team is. Smoke used by Aster. Here they come again. Out of Atos. Blood right, and no jump just yet. Bushwhack coming through onto the little track. Blink hoof stomp. Now there is the life break. They've got the Soulbind, Cold Embrace, Winter's Curse coming through into the Huskar. Not really taking that much damage, and Monet, he's got himself that second life. They get the kill to Sun Goku, they'll take it to the Centaur, and they'll use this Bushwhack to lock up the little track again, but they've got the life break with the BKB being popped by MS. Ooh, avoiding the Sharpshooter, getting a kill onto the Luna, looking for the rest. As White Horse into the tree, scurrying away, Bushwhack lands once more. Acorn shot just not doing enough damage. And if they got the life break, they should get the kill on the Hoodwing, making it a third. All three will buy back. Is Mone stuck in the trees? I think he is. Uh oh. Oh no. Somebody he's like, come close he's like, so I can life break you. 
Blink of Stomp. Radovatos comes in with the blood right. Right quick damage coming through. They've got the life break ball lightning onto the back lines, getting himself the vortex. ZYD coming in, trying to make something happen, but it's not going to be enough. He has himself that axe. I don't think that's going to be an item that really turns around this game. As they'll go for the bottom tier three, they'll take it out and look towards the racks next. No centaur for 60 seconds. Blinding in once again. The vortex on a two. Blood right down, but that's not going to land. He's ballings back into the base. And the racks will fall without SAG really having much to say about it. Like, how, how do they... Like, how do they take fights? I mean, they're going to try and go for it once more. They might as well. It's their series, right? So... Give it a, give it a final shot. They need to find the Oracle first. A lightning, finding the Oracle as well as the Bloodseeker Life Break. Interesting little him. combination there. They've got themselves the Winter's Curse, but the Sun comes out of the Winter Wyvern. They get the kill on the line. They'll take up the Oracle, and now they'll lose XCJ. Buyback comes out from the Oracle. You have buyback available from the Winter Wyvern, but the Winter's Curse on cooldown for 73 seconds. Still buyback on XCJ regardless. Looking for Mega Creeps, Ball Lightning in. They've got the Vortex once again. He'll avoid the, avoid the Rod of Atos. They've got the Silent Sound of the Mo uh, Monet Huskar. This doesn't feel like he's just... doing much of anything. Where's your damage? Mega creeps. All lightning. Up and through. Tier 4 is getting low. Blink hoof stomp. They finally got themselves the centaur back. But there's the Rod of Atos as well as the life break coming through. Monet might lose that Aegis, oh, but they've got no. themselves the false promise. Sharpshooter not going to do anything. They get the kill on the Sun Goku. Soulbind about to be full HP. out onto the Winter Wyvern as well as this Storm. They'll call GG. They'll get the kill onto MS. And now they've got the Rupture. Are they going to dive anything while the base gets taken? Do they have the time to get the kill? The Cold Embrace. And they will find XCJ just as the Ancient collapses. Yeah, really well played by Asta. I think this is kind of what we expected coming into the series. I think SAG, they... they they had good moments in game one, but this game two, it felt like they were always playing from behind, right? It was it was tough for them.